ECT stands for electroconvulsive therapy. Patient consent should be obtained before ECT. The responsible clinician should inform the patient of what the treatment involves, the intended benefits, potential side effects and of other treatment options. They should be given written information and support from an advocate, family member or friend is recommended. ECT can be given as an inpatient or as a day patient. It is usually given twice a week and the number of sessions during a course of treatment is usually from 6 to 8. A cuff is placed around the arm to monitor blood pressure. A probe is placed on the finger to monitor oxygen levels in the blood. Sticker leads are attached on the chest to monitor heart rate during treatment. Before treatment, the patient will already have had a physical examination, routine blood tests, a heart tracing and chest x-ray if indicated. They should have had nothing to eat or drink at least six hours before the treatment. Further sticker leads are placed on the forehead and behind the ears to monitor and record brain waves and seizure activity during the treatment. An anaesthetist meets with the patient to make sure they are fit for an anaesthetic. Hello Matt, I'm Dr Rougier, I'm your anaesthetist today. So you're going to have some ECT and you'll have an anaesthetic for that. Alright, I'm just going to put a tiny little needle in your hand and then you'll go off to sleep very quickly and we'll give you some oxygen to breathe. You'll just be asleep for a couple of minutes while you have your treatment and then you'll wake up straight afterwards. The patient is then given two injections. The first injection is a general anaesthetic. Serious physical complications from ECT are rare. The mortality rates for ECT are low, 1 in 50,000. This is comparable to risks of general anaesthetic for minor surgery. Short-term minor side effects for ECT are common, including headache, dizziness, nausea, muscle aches and postictal confusion. Anterograde memory impairments are also common and can persist between treatments and sometimes up to several months. Retrograde memory impairments can also occur. The second injection given, succinamethonium, is a muscle relaxant. This is given to modify the seizure so the patient does not have a full-blown fit. After the patient falls asleep, the muscle relaxant may cause some twitching of the muscles, which are called fasciculations. Okay, there are the fasciculations. The patient is given more oxygen to breathe and a mouth guard is inserted to protect their teeth during the seizure. Once under the anaesthetic, a psychiatric doctor trained in ECT will apply two electrodes to the patient's scalp for a few seconds. The electrodes pass a small electrical charge through the brain, inducing generalised seizure activity. The seizure is briefer than spontaneous seizures, typically lasting 15 to 45 seconds. Evidence shows that ECT is highly effective. Current guidelines recommend that it should be used only to achieve rapid and short-term improvement of severe symptoms after a trial of other treatments have proven ineffective or in potentially life-threatening conditions in individuals with severe depressive illness, catatonia, a prolonged or severe manic episode. While guidelines do not recommend using ECT in the routine management of schizophrenia or as a maintenance therapy, it is effective and may sometimes be used in these situations. After treatment, the patient continues to be monitored and is given more oxygen as they gradually wake up. Mental state should be assessed following each ECT session and treatment should be stopped when symptoms improve and the patient starts making good recovery from the illness. Cognitive function should also be monitored on an ongoing basis and at the end of each course of treatment. Hello, Matt. Matt, you're just waking up. You've had your treatment. This is just oxygen you're breathing.